Oh, God bless you, brother. This thing for Aunt Shechael, that was good. Somebody helped me the first service. Somebody's helped me the second service. Hafokba, hafokba, tekolaba. Hafokba, hafokba, mashiachba. Turn it and turn it. Everything you need is in it. Turn it and turn it, for the Messiah is in it. Ah, thank you, Anche Kyle, and the ladies that are also helping out. That blesses me. I don't want to forget that. I love that, that Rabbi Michael taught us that. And sometimes I find myself halfway through a message, and, and the thought just comes, you forgot Hafokba. So uh, don't let me forget Hafokba. Listen, Nitzavim. Everybody say Nitzavim. Nitzavim. It means that it's the title of our parsha. It means you are standing. And when I was meditating on that this week, as early as Monday, I, I was looking at the parsha and thinking about you were standing. And I just get that, that visual image of Israel standing out in front of Moshe, the wives, the children, the men, standing there as families, and single P, everybody together, Kulano Ke'echad, all of us is one. And, and, and if, well, I, I want you to see what he says as part of, of his speech that day. This is found in chapter 29 of Devarim Deuteronomy, verse 14. I make this covenant and this oath. Everybody say that with me. I make this covenant and this oath. Not with you alone, but with him who stands here with us today before Adonai Eloheinu, the Lord our God, as well as with him who is not here with us today. For you know that we dwelt in the land of Egypt, and that we came through the nations which you passed by, and you saw their abominations and their idols which were among them, wood and stone and silver and gold, so that there may not be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turns away today from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations that there may not be among you a root bearing bitterness or wormwood so that it may not happen when he hears the words of this curse that he blesses himself in his heart saying I shall have peace even though I follow the dictates of my heart as though the drunkard could be included with the sober If you're not sober today, that should sober you up before the Lord. Listen, all the people of Israel, and God says, I am making covenant with you. And, and I reminded our people earlier, he did not say individually, I'm just going to make it with you, Moshe, and with Aharon and a couple of others. He made it with all of Israel. I make a covenant with Israel and the thought occurred to me this week. You must have been having a bad day. That's what you'll think when, when I tell you what I thought. This thought just came to me. You know, Rabbi Russ says that we're part of the Jewish community, the greater Jewish community. We're part of it. Whether they want us or not, they have us. And, and truthfully, truthfully, people, we are seeing some huge inroads made in that area, in the nation of Israel, in our Jewish community here. More and more and more Jewish people are accepting us that we are Jewish. We're a synagogue. And, and it's good. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. But, but today, I want you to see that God made that covenant with Israel. I call it the Mosaic Covenant. He also later, and we're going to talk about it later in the message, he also made a second covenant with Israel. Now, I just want to ask you rhetorically, you should know after that line, who did he make the second covenant with? Israel. He says in Jeremiah 31, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continue not in my covenant and I regarded them not. But this is my covenant that I will make with them up to those days, says the Lord. I'll put my Torah in their heart and I'll write my Torah in their minds and I'll be their God and they shall be my people. They'll not have to teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, do you know about the Lord? For all shall know me. 
Do you know about the Lord of Israel? The whole earth is going to hear. The whole earth has heard about the Lord of Israel. Many of the earth has rejected the, the God of Israel. But, but days are coming when they're going to have another chance in his awesome power and judgment. They're going to have a chance to know this God who is God. And there is no other. But listen, this morning... I want you to picture this. Moshe is speaking these words from Adonai to the people. Do they see God in the natural standing there? No. Do they see God clothed in the arm named Yeshua that came down to earth later? No, he's not there. They just see Moshe saying, this is the word of the Lord. How much different is it from this morning when not just here, but any place that a man or woman stands up and speaks in the name of the Lord and he's really, or she's really called of God and anointed to do so. It, it looks very similar in that we're trying to tell you what the word of the Lord says. And what I thought about this week was, you have a chance to go just like they did. Somebody in that crowd back then probably went, you know what, how do I get out of this? I'm not sure I even want in this covenant. There's too many obligations. It's too much stuff I have. I, how do I get out of this? I'm part of the Israeli community. God made a, a corporate covenant with Israel. And there had to be some people there whose hearts weren't right. I want to tell you something that broke the heart of Moshe. I know this. Moshe would have given anything if he could have put the fear of God in the heart of the people. If there was a way to put the fear of God in the heart of the people, Moshe's trying to tell them what's about to happen. And, and you know, and he knew that some of the people standing there weren't on board with this covenant. They didn't want to walk in the regulations, the statutes, the commandments. They didn't want to. Listen, he says there in the part that we, we just read, it says if somebody says, I'm not going to do that, and they walk according to their dictates of their heart, he goes on, if you read it, it says the curses will chase you wherever you go. You can't get away from them. It's like, but wait a minute. I didn't want to, I'm not sure I wanted it. Well, then you should have gone back to Egypt. You should have gone to another country, but don't stay in Israel because God made a covenant with Israel. And so, people, are we radically different today? Are there people sitting in this place today who don't really believe the word of the Lord? I'm going to talk about that when we close. But, but first, I want to keep focusing on what Moshe told the people. Can, can somebody follow the dictates of his heart and the curses won't overtake you in that nation of Israel? God answers the question with a question. It's a very Jewish thing to do is to answer a question with a question. And God says, can the drunkard appear with the sober? In other words, if you Follow the dictates of your heart. If you do what flesh wants to do and you don't want to join that covenant, you don't want to take your responsibility as part of that covenant to do his commandments, God says the judgments are going to come upon you. Do you think Moshe knew what was about to happen? Look, two chapters later, Moshe says, verse 24 of chapter 31, so it was when Moses had completed writing the words of this Torah in a scroll, when they were finished, Moshe commanded the Levites who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this scroll of the Torah and put it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there as a witness against you. For I know your rebellion and your stiff neck. If today, while I am yet alive with you, you've been rebellious against the Lord, then how much more after my death? Gather to me all the elders of your tribes and your officers that I may speak these words in their hearing and call heaven and earth to witness against them. For I know that after my death, 
you will become utterly corrupt and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you and evil will befall you in the latter days because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Boy, that's a heavy word you say. Richard, do you have to be that heavy on Shabbat? Listen, it is, it is the heart of a leader to want to give the word of God out to people and it is the desire of the leader that everybody, every one of us would have the fear of the Lord inside of us. You understand the fear of the Lord? We, we have these words. If you know them, read them with me. Da lifne mi ata omed. If you don't know them, now say them with me. Da lifne mi ata omed. Know before whom you stand. It's written on over many arcs in Judaism because our, our forefathers wanted us to be cognizant of the God we serve. That he's a God of righteousness. He's a God of holiness. He's a God who means what he says. And Moshe saw what was coming. The judgments that were coming. And he was trying to tell the Israeli people, listen, God made a covenant with Israel. Do you know how much of the world's population is Jewish? Less than one half of one percent. Do you ever think, well, God, you could have picked the Oriental. You could have picked the Arab. You could have picked the Caucasian. You could have picked the African. You could have picked, Lord, the Latinos. You could have picked... What were you thinking? This is less than one half of one percent. God says, that's why I chose them. So my name could be shown great in them. But Lord, they let you down like the rest of us would have let you down. That's why I chose them to show my mercy and my compassion. In the last day, God says, I'm going to bring them back to the land. And I'm not going to do it because of their might or their power or their righteousness. In fact, they're going to come back in humility, broken. But I'm going to bring them back and I'm going to show my great name. Moshe was trying, if, if he could have given the fear of Adonai, if Moshe could have just, if I could walk up to you today and just lay hands on you and give you the fear of Adonai. Do you think I would do it? We would stop the service right now and I'd just go walk over and just lay hands on everybody and just say, give it to, I, I can't give it to you. Only God can give the fear, the awesome respect. Only God's ruach can come in and break our heart and change us and turn us and turn our hearts toward him. Look, here we are thousands of years later after these people stood before Moshe. We stood before the ark of the Lord today. We stood in the presence of the Lord. The, the word of the Lord's coming forth. Look what's happened over these thousands of years. God sends the prophets. He prophesies a new covenant. He prophesies a Mashiach, a Savior. And, and, the, and the strange thing was, people, listen, he... He decides that the Mashiach, in his eternal plan, the Mashiach, his arm of salvation is going to be his, he's sending his son as the Mashiach. The son of God, the arm of God, the arm of Elohim comes as the Mashiach. Now listen. Did Mashiach just come? It, it, we said he made the covenant with Israel. Did Mashiach just come for Israel? God had a plan. And it's why we don't just refer to Yeshua as the Mashiach. But he's called Ben Elohim. He's the son of God. God's desire was to pick a people out. Chosen people. He chose Israel to bring the Mashiach. Not just for the light of salvation and restoration of the Jewish people, but to the light of salvation to the whole world, to the Gentiles. Our sign out front, you know what that Hebrew says? A light of revelation to the nations. 
a light of revelation, salvation to the nations, and the glory of your people, Israel. Messiah has come. He is who he is, and we preach him, and every week some people come, and they listen, and they're just like maybe was in Moshe's audience over 3,000 years ago. I don't know if I want part of that. But you and I who have chosen to believe we believe that God is, that he sent Mashiach, and, and it's through your faith that Messiah comes into your life. Now listen, here's what I realized yesterday and in the middle of last night preparing this. God, if I can't put the fear of you in people's lives, how are we going to get, what are we going to do to get the fear of the Lord in the rest of the Jewish community. In, in the, listen, how are we going to get the fear of God in our children and our grandchildren? How many of you would love to see your grandchildren know the fear of God? And I don't mean be afraid of God. I, I don't mean they are, I mean they have a healthy respect for the power and the presence of the holy living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I, I came to the conclusion, we all want it. We all desire it. We want it for ourselves. We want it for our children, for our grandchildren. And, and last night, in the middle of the night, I'm thinking about this, and I thought, I'm back to square one with it. There's only one way we're going to move the hand of God to do this, and that's through prayer and intercession. Prayer and intercession. This morning in the prayer room, I like to call that... The, the generating room. And in the prayer room this morning, there were about 10 or 12 of us praying. And I looked around the room and it was, there was one person under 50 in the room praying. The rest of us were old codgers. I don't mean that ugly. But that's what we're called sometime. But I looked around that room thinking, God, thank you. I thought about that scripture that we talked about a couple of weeks ago in Yochanan where, where it, it says that, that uh, the woman in adultery is caught, brought to Yeshua, and they say, Moshe said, Stoner, what do you say? It says Yeshua stooped down, wrote on the ground as though he didn't even hear him. And it says they continued asking. And so he said, look, here's what let's do. He lifts himself up and he says, he that's without stone among you, you throw the first one. He's, he that's without sin among you, you throw the first stone. And everybody goes away. One by one, it says, beginning where? At the oldest. The older Jewish men who were in the crowd, they left first. Then the younger and the younger till everybody's gone. And, I, and, I, and as I looked around that prayer room today, I thought, you know, we who have walked with Messiah for a long time, we who have traveled the road of, of sorrow and heartache and joy and, and joy unspeakable and receive both sides of the coin, we who have walked with Messiah and endured, listen, you know what? We, we come back to this conclusion over and over and over again. We have to pray. We've got to pray. If we want to see God move, we've got to pray. So here's what I'm asking Beth Messiah to do. I ask the first service, I'm asking all of you, we're, we're coming in to Erev Rosh Hashanah tomorrow. Yamim Noraim. Everybody say Yamim Noraim. Yamim Noraim. The days of awe. Here's what I'd like for you to do. I'd like for you to ask the Lord about fasting some in this time. Just humbling yourselves before the Lord. Fasting and praying. And, and as, as one of the parshiot say, Vayigash, Vayigash. You remember the Vayigash? You know, you know what that is? That's in, the, in uh, Deuteronomy, where, and excuse me, in Genesis where it says, and he drew near, and he drew near. Yehuda drew near 
to Yosef. And so I'm, I'm asking everybody, if you would, maybe not. I mean, tomorrow night we're going to have apples, honey. We're going to have a time of rejoicing. Even on Monday morning, we're going to have apples, honey, a time of rejoicing. I see apple cakes and stuff in there. It looks delicious. Susan White hid it so nobody would get into it before tomorrow night. It looks awesome. But what I'm asking you is for the next nine days after that, starting Tuesday night, starting Monday night, starting Monday night, the next nine days through Yom Kippur, as much as you can, just ask the Lord, what would you have me do? I realize a lot, listen, all of us, we work, we, we've got so much to do, everybody's so busy, but if you, if you fasted one or two meals a day, you just ate one meal a day, then you, and you, tried to stay in the spirit of the fast. Maybe you, you fasted something the whole time, even if you can only do a couple of days. Whatever the spirit of God moves on your heart to do, I want us corporately. You know, we start out the new year, January 1st. We always start with a fast. Sometimes it's 6, 7, 10, 14 days, whatever God puts on our heart to do. Well, we're starting another year tomorrow night. Rosh Hashanah is the head of the year. So I'm asking everybody for the nine days that follow Rosh Hashanah is to pray about what God would put on your heart to do, that we would humble ourselves as a people together, that we would draw near to God. You know, my wife taught a sisterhood retreat years ago, and in it, they were, the, the retreat, the teaching was built around intercession. And my wife said, basically, intercession is standing before God on behalf of somebody else. Standing before God on behalf of somebody else. Beth Messiah, I've, I've never seen a more ferocious attack time as I have at this Rosh Hashanah season. Usually when we get near Passover, all kinds of spiritual garbage goes on. I've never seen it this much at the High Holy Days. People are sick. People need help. Sarah Thayer hasn't been out of a bed for a month. She's, she, she needs prayer. I put it out to some of our intercessory prayer team. Please pray. Seriously, Lita and Mike are coming back. They've been in Atlanta going, I, I could go on and on. We got a message yesterday from Israel, Jamie Cowan, who is part of us. We love him. We help support him every month. The two Arab people found him in an alley, passed out. They got him to the hospital. He's Beth Messiah. How many of you know we need prayer? We need desperate prayer. Who, somebody said one time, God doesn't answer prayer. God answers desperate prayer. I'm asking you to pray with me for nine days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and draw near to God and offer up some, some intercessory prayer that's desperate before God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, I'm just asking right now, as we're kulano ke'echad, as we're all as one before you right now. Lord, I know people are busy fasting in these busy days. Seems impossible, but all things are possible to, you, to us if we believe. So I'm asking for you just to move on the heart of all of us at, at Bethlehem. Even those that are not here today, that this word would get out. And that, Lord, all of us would just... Just listen to your voice and that we would fast and stand before you on, on behalf of our families, on behalf of our mishpocha, our greater family at Beth Messiah, on behalf of Israel, on behalf of the rest of the Jewish community. God, that you would just pour out your spirit upon us, upon the people we pray for. Lord, help us. Give us a healthy respect in fear of you, knowing that you are a holy God, Lord, knowing that judgments are coming up on the earth. It seems, Lord, to the, just to the spiritual eye when we look out and we hear all the news reports and all the anti-Semitism that's, that's growing worldwide. Lord God, you picked your people. You chose your people, Israel. Please help us to stand as one united in praying for all of our people, Israel, for the body of Messiah 
as Christians are running for their lives today in foreign countries. Women scared, young teenagers scared, being chased out of their homelands. God, please have mercy. Help us to draw close like, like Yehuda drew close to Joseph. Oh God, that we might draw close to the Mashiach. Just strengthen us. Re-energize us if necessary. Help us to have the energy to do this, Lord God. And that we might come in tomorrow night and see your hand move. And that we might come back 10 days later at Yom Kippur. And that there might be a holy outpouring of your spirit. We'll be careful to give you all the praise for what you accomplish. Lord God, change us and we shall be changed. Turn us and we shall be turned. Make us holy and we shall be holy. Forgive us and we shall be forgiven. Save and we shall be saved. Hashem Yeshua. Amen. Amen.